you how to roll out a typical spalia. So this is my dough, which I've had resting here now, oh, I would say about an hour. So minimum time is about half an hour, but to be honest, I usually go for a little bit longer. Um, also gives me a chance to kind of do, you know, some household chores like emptying the dishwasher or, you know, doing some work and replying to emails and things. Now, this is my pin. It's actually fairly long. It's, um, this is a 90 centimeter pin. And this is the one I use for pretty much everything. Also because, you know, I don't have very large hands. So you've also got to get, got to, get a pin according to how big your hands are and how, you know, how heavy it is and how much you can um, hold and manage. Because don't forget that when you've got your spolia hanging off, it's even heavier. Um, I also have a little bowl here just with some, with some flour in. Now, before we start, um, what's really important is that we have good posture. So if you have back problems, and even if you don't, I would suggest you keep your feet at about a hips width apart, and you bend your knees slightly and bring in your, um, your hips forward so that you align your back, and that way you're not putting pressure at the base of your spine. The first thing we do is we kind of make sure that it is as round as possible and then we flatten it out like that. Now when we flatten it we also turn it because the tendency obviously our hands are not completely even and so we just need to kind of keep it as even as possible. Now what a lot of my students tend to do is think it's a pizza <laughs> and create a kind of crust around the outside which is not what we want. So I'm just kind of flattening it out now as much as I can with my hand. Like that. And just giving it a small quarter turn as I go. And doing a little bit with the other hand as well, just to kind of make sure it's kind of nice and even. Then the next thing we do, we try and work as close to us as possible so we're not putting pressure on our back. So. Okay, so this is about sort of 10 to 15 centimeters from uh, my tummy. And so I'm working close, like I said, to make sure that I am not putting any pressure on my back. Next thing, my pin. My pin has to kind of be balanced on my sfoglia, okay? This is really important. So now you can't see it from this angle, but this side is, a little bit heavier than this side and so I'm just going to shift it over a little bit and that's really important because if you have one side that's heavier than the other then your sfoglia is going to be uh, thicker on one side and thinner on the other. The other thing that you need to take into consideration that when you place your pin you always need to be able to see half of the sfoglia above the pin so in this direction. The other thing that we do, we only work upwards and outwards. So always away from us and never towards us. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm gonna press down very gently. I'm gonna keep my hands sort of about, so my thumbs will just be about be lined up with the edge of my sfoglia. Can you see like that? And so I'm just going to push that forward a little bit, leaving a little lip. And I'm gonna do a quarter turn. Now I'm right-handed, so I'm gonna do a quarter turn clockwise. If you're left-handed, you can do a quarter turn anti-clockwise. So now I'm just doing a quarter turn, always kind of leaving just a slight lip. Can you see there? And I'm going to do that now sort of for eight turns. Now, first thing that we also see now is that we've got a slight irregularity in the dough. You can, it's barely visible, it's just here. I'm gonna point out to it with, the, with my pin. Now, because I've got this rounded edge of my pin, I'm just gonna push that out a little bit and that will push out the irregularity. Tiny, tiny little thing that I spot. Um, not hugely important, but it's just kind of me being obsessive. <laughs> And so I'm just going to keep rolling this out now until such time as I can't turn it anymore with one hand when you kind of feel that it starts stretching with one hand. Okay, and always leaving just a slight lip at the edge. 
And again, I've still got that kind of little indentation. I'm going to push it out and I'm going to push up. Now what I'm doing when I'm rolling, I'm never kind of going up to here. I'm just going, rolling back and forth very gently, just so the rolling pin arrives at the base of my palm. Never pass that. If it means, if it means rolling the pin back a little bit, just to come back and pushing forward, that's absolutely fine. What you don't want is kind of to end up doing this. So that's a kind of big no-no. Again. Right, I'm starting to use two hands now to turn it. And it's gonna start getting to the point where I won't be able to turn it at all by itself. And that's fine, that's why we have our rolling pin as well. Again, always being able to see half the sfoglia above the pin. Because effectively what we're doing, we're bringing out that kind of thick bit here of dough and we're pushing it outwards. Okay, I'm not being as obsessed as I normally am with kind of making sure it's completely round also because I don't want to confuse you. Okay. And now I'm going to do it like this. And one more turn like this. Always kind of, when I say you don't come back on yourself, what I mean is you don't come below that halfway point of your sfoglia. Okay, if it means that you have to bring the, the pin back and forth to roll it out, that's absolutely fine. Okay, right, from now, I'm gonna bring it close to me again. Now what we're going to do, because it's starting to get bigger and we can't um, extend it just to sort of this for this bit here, we need to work north, we need to work northeast and we need to work northwest. So we start off by pressing north and we go right to the edge in this case, but not over the edge. Then again, from the middle of the sfoglia, so the halfway point, northeast and northwest. Can you see we've extended that? We wrap it over, roll it. That's all my flour which I used when I was leaving it to rest turn it over and roll it out and we've got a cat. Constant battle in this kitchen. Right, okay, here we go again. North, twice. Northeast, twice. North and west, twice. We've got an indentation there, that's not a problem, I'm gonna bring it out and here as well. Roll over the pin, like that. Roll it down without pressing. Lift up, and a quarter turn. And again, one, two, one, two, and one, and two. Flip over, roll over, and a quarter turn. Now, the, the amount of times that we start rolling with a pin will depend on the size of the sfoglia. The bigger the sfoglia, the more times you will need to roll. Okay, so I think I've done it three times now. Once, twice, north. Once, twice, northeast. And once, twice, northwest. And always, like I said, be sure to bring out from the middle. Now, my... Um, Sfoglia teacher, Rina Poletti, always used to say to me, and I could have understood what she meant after a few times of making the sfoglia, do not make the sfoglia with your hands, but with your eyes. So if you see that there are any kind of indentations or you think that it's not completely 
Perfect, then just kind of go and work on those elements. So there's a little indentation. I'm just gonna push it out. Again, from the middle, one, two, three. It's starting to get bigger. One, two, three, right to the edge. And one, and two, and three. And right to the edge. I'm gonna give it a little push up, just to bring out the roundness. Lift up and turn. Okay, so this part of the pin, when we work, we place it on our hips, we place it flat on the board, and we work, we push outwards. We do not hold it sort of like, we don't hold it upright, okay? It's gonna go flat. And we flip over. I think I've done that twice now. I kind of explain and then I lose count. And again, bring it close. One, two, three. One, two, three. And one, and two, and three. Okay. Flip over. Lift up. And again. And this is the bit where, again, we start working outwards. One, two, and three. One, two, and three. And one, and two, and three. And give it a final little push up. Right. Now, we've done that four times, so we've kind of done an entire clock face if you like. What I'm going to do, I'm going to flip it over my pin. What's really important is that you, you keep this part attached to your pin and you tuck it back so that here you've got no gaps, okay? That's why you want the sfoglia rounded so that when you tuck it over the pin, you don't have any flappy bits because those flappy bits are gonna then cause creases and then they cause holes. And so you want to avoid those. So. I'm rolling over and from the middle, I'm going to start gliding and pushing outwards with my hands. Like that. And here I'm kind of pressing very hard, well, sort of fairly hard, but what I'm not doing, I'm not going right down to the edge. Because if you go right down to the edge, then it can stick and then your sfoglia is all stuck to each other and it's a bit of a disaster. Okay, and again, pull that over. Now, you'll have noticed that I haven't actually used any extra flour yet. And that is a sign of a kind of really well hydrated sfoglia. However, it will very, very much depend on your environment. So, is it humid? Is it warm in your house? If you've got a lot of humidity, so, you know, one of the challenges that I face sometimes when I'm teaching in class at the school is that I've got a brodo, I've got a brodo boiling or water boiling and um, it makes my foyer humid and then it's kind of more likely to stick. So, flip over. and roll out with my hands. And again, so here it's kind of sticking, can you see very lightly? And that's fine, it's not, it's not difficult to unravel, but what I will do, I'm just going to make sure that it's sort of nice and flat. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna add a tiny bit of flour. Um, literally, just so you can see, just a sprinkling, just to avoid it sticking. Okay. Now, this bit here doesn't seem to want to stay rounded. 
and that will happen very very often from the beginning and again flip over and from the middle glide your sfoglia outwards and lift up turn and open now this is a two egg sfoglia okay so it's actually not going to get that much bigger than this you can see, you can already start seeing the, um, the lines in the board. The, the knots in my wood are not very dark, so they're kind of, bit, you know, they're kind of easier to see when the wood is much darker. But you can start seeing the, the patterns in the, in the board. Now, one of the techniques that I did show um, via YouTube video was this kind of swimming technique, which, is, which kind of goes like this. Okay? And that is used especially when you've kind of got a much bigger sfoglia to work with. And with a kind of smaller sfoglia like this, to be honest, it is not that useful because we've already kind of reached the size that would kind of already be kind of pretty much acceptable. And again, tucking over the this, sfoglia this on my pin, making sure it's tight by pushing it back so I'm bringing it forward, I'm rolling over, but then I'm pushing, I don't know whether you saw that, I'm kind of pushing, doing this downward motion with my hands, so up and my wrists down, so that I'm tucking the sfoglia right in. And rolling over. kind of compared to my board might look or my pin might look um, a little bit small but honestly this um, this board is very large as is the pin they you know I kind of usually do five or six eggs worth on here okay so can you see it's a little bit stuck and that's fine the important really important thing with this now is that we just add a little bit of flour, just a tiny, tiny amount. It will absorb as much as it needs. Don't overdo it with the flour, especially if you're gonna be making any filled pastas, because if you overdo it with the flour, then you won't be able to make them stick when you're closing. Okay, and so I'm gonna push this out here like that. I'm going to wrap it over. Okay, and again, glide outwards. Lift up. Okay. Now, sometimes it's not kind of 360 degrees and that's fine. The important thing is, as my teacher always said, is that your sides, that your edges kiss. Can you see? So we've got kind of pretty much right on edges there. Do it the other way as well. See how we go. Like that. So my edges kiss on the, over here. There we go. Now, I don't know whether you can see, but this part here is a little bit more kind of see-through and this part is a little bit sort of thicker and you can also feel it when, you're ha when you run your hand over it, okay? So generally speaking, if it's slightly thinner, it'll be a little bit cooler to the touch and when it's a little bit thicker, it'll be slightly warmer to the touch. Okay, so what I'm going to do, when I roll over my sfoglia now, 
These are the bits that are a little bit thicker, especially this part. And I'm going to concentrate on putting more pressure on this part here, so I'll show you. What I am going to do though, I'm gonna add a little bit of flour, again, because it's starting to stick. Okay, flip over, like that. Make sure it's tucked in underneath. And then I'm going to make sure that I'm tucking my pin backwards. Now, rather than starting from the middle to um, bring out and sort of thin out the, the dough, I'm gonna start from this part here where I know that they're thicker. Okay, and I know that this part is thicker than this part, so I'm gonna concentrate on this part, can you see? I'm just using this hand a little bit more, and then I'm gonna start rolling it together. So one of the things about these kind of hand-grown folias is that they're not completely perfect, and so texture is also you know, kind of indicate a little bit by thickness sometimes. Right, and there we go. There we are. Now, I'm gonna flatten that out. And I think that I'm just gonna work it with the edges of my pin is what we've got our rounded bits for, like that. Now and there you have your handmade sfoglia with a rolling pin, two eggs. Thanks for watching.